Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Gary with GameStorm, and today I'm going to share a little bit of my gaming history with you. As of this recording, I'm 44 years old, so I'm a pretty old guy. I've been around since video gaming first started, and I uh, just thought I would uh, throw this video up to give you guys a little bit of my background as far as video gaming goes. Uh, when I was first exposed to like video gaming, they weren't really video games, they were uh, a lot of electronic handhelds when I was a kid, so I played, uh, I had electronic uh, basketball from Mattel, my brother had football, uh, we also had one called Pac-Man 2, and then at friends' house I played games like Simon, and there was another one called Merlin. They were pretty basic games. Uh, you know, they were fun for the time, but uh, it's hard to go back and play stuff like that today. That's pretty much what got me first exposed to what you would call, like, electronic gaming. Uh, and then, I th it was probably in the mid to late 70s, uh, my uncle got a Pong clone for Christmas, and uh, me and my brother played on that a lot. Uh, we thought, you know, this is like one of the coolest things ever to have like something on the television screen that you could control yourself, you know. It was black and white and the sound came from the console itself, but you know, <laughs> we didn't know any different. We we just, we really liked playing that. It was a lot of fun. And then, you know, arcades started uh, popping up here and there. Uh, every time we'd go to the mall, we'd get to go to the arcade in the mall. And they'd have pretty basic games back then. They had a lot of pinball. Uh, a lot of mechanical style games, like you see in amusement parks and stuff. Uh, but you didn't get any tickets or win any prizes. It was just for the fun of it. And uh, there was a game called Space War. I think that was like one of the first video games I, that I had seen. <clears throat> and it was... It was kind of strange. It had like a keyboard for the controls, and you just basically fought against each other. Uh, then a little later on, you know, games like Asteroids came around. Uh, the first color video game I ever saw was Pac-Man. You know, really good games like Centipede was one of my favorites. Uh, Donkey Kong was like groundbreaking when it first came out because hadn't really ever seen a video game like that where it was platforming but you know it kind of had a little bit of a storyline to it uh, another one of my favorites was uh, Star Wars arcade it was a lot of fun played that for quite a bit Tron uh, love Tron I, I really liked the movie and when they came out with the Tron machine I played that like all the time and another one that's a lot of people don't like I guess but uh, I really loved it it was it was nothing like it at the time it was uh, Dragon's Lair it was they when it first came out they had it all over the news and everything people were really hyped about it it was the first arcade machine that uh, I remember costing 50 cents to play but uh, yeah I, I really liked that machine it would always gather a crowd of people around to play if you were really good at it and they'd have like a monitor like sitting up on top of the arcade machine so people could see it they couldn't get close enough to it so then the Atari 2600 I was exposed to that uh, I never had one of those myself we were pretty poor when I was a kid uh, a kid up the street or, or down the road because we lived out in the country so we had dirt roads <laughs> but uh, he had an Atari but he had the, uh, the Sears Telegames version. But all my friends had Ataris, so I played quite a, quite a bit of an Atari, even though I didn't have the console myself. Uh, one of my favorite games on it was Circus with the paddle controllers. I don't know why, I just thought that game was a lot of fun. Uh, Pitfall was one of my favorites. River Raid is probably my most favorite Atari 2600 game. And uh, I played a lot of Yars Revenge, that was a lot of fun. My very first console that I ever got was a ColecoVision, and that was probably one of the best uh, moments of my childhood as far as getting getting a gift. 
I was so excited for it. I opened it and pretty much played it all day and as late as my mom would let me stay up. But uh, one of the first games I had on it was uh, Zaxxon and it came with Donkey Kong, which that was my favorite game at the time. Played a lot of that, probably more than anything. And uh, another one of my favorites was Ladybug. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it, it was a really fun game. Um, Gyrus was really good on it. There was another game called uh, Pepper 2 that was really fun. I uh, also had the, got the Super Action controllers up later on for it. And those were, they were really big. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I liked them, but they weren't the easiest controllers for a little kid to hold. I mean, I wasn't a real small kid at the time, but... Yeah, that, those were a little strange. They had some kind of weird rolling thing on them too. Like when you played baseball, you could like roll it. You had to roll it to make the guys run around the bases. It, it was strange. Okay, while I was playing my ColecoVision uh, and had the, my uncle had a VIC-20, but he had just recently got a Commodore 64, so he gave me his VIC-20. And uh, he had a few games on it, like cartridges. One of them was Omega Race. That was pretty fun. Uh, and I didn't have a disk drive for it. I just had the uh, the data set, which took cassettes. So there were magazines out at the time called uh, Compute and Compute Gazette, and they would include uh, programs in them that you could type into the computer yourself. And I would do that, and I would save them to a blank cassette and play those. It, it was pretty fun, but I really wanted a Commodore 64. <laughs> But they were they were pretty expensive back then. Like I think they were like six hundred dollars when they first came out. And me not having a job or anything, being not old enough to work, that just wasn't gonna happen. And then right around that time, like the big video game crash happened. Um, didn't really. I mean, it didn't really affect me very much. I <clears throat> I still played my ColecoVision. I picked up. A lot of uh, ColecoVision games that were on clearance, like quite a few all at one time, because they were just like a couple of dollars a piece, you know. Kind of wish that kind of thing would happen today where they would like bring some of that old stuff back and it would not be as expensive as it is now. But uh, yeah, the video game crash kind of sucked because there weren't, there weren't a lot of things released for the home back then except for stuff like for computers like IBM and Apple and stuff like that, which leads me to the next, uh, what I call a gaming console, but it was a computer. <clears throat> I got a uh, Commodore 64, and they had dropped in price by then, and I pretty much had a, I had my first job and helped, and my mom helped me pay for it too, but I got the, uh, the disk drive with it, and some of my favorite games on that were uh, Bruce Lee and Elite. And I used to play a lot of text adventures like Zork and uh, Deadline. And I played one called Suspended, which was really cool. It was a sci-fi game. So the, the next video game system I got was a Sega Master System. And I debated on this for quite a long time. I've kept seeing Nintendo in the store and Sega, and I would like check check out the graphics for them. And you know, the Sega Master System had better graphics than the NES, but the NES had some games on it that I wanted to play, and there were a lot of games on the Master System I didn't know a lot about except for Afterburner and Outrun, which is what sold the system for me. And those were the first two games I picked up for it, and. Uh, my, the Sega Master System I got was just a basic set, and it came with uh, Hang On and what was it called? Astro Warrior. That's right. So I had my Sega Master System for a while. Uh, I didn't get to pick up any more games for it because I lost my job and I wasn't making any money. I was only 16 or 17 at the time, 16 probably. Um, and then I got, I finally got another job, and it was around 1989 is when, I think, yeah, when the Sega Genesis came out, 
and I had saved up enough money to buy it because I had unfortunately sold my master system. I wish I hadn't done that, but I sold it and used the money for that and saved that time to get the Sega Genesis. And the first game I bought for it was Ghouls and Ghosts, and I played that game like all the time. And it came with a uh, what was it? Altered Beast. It came with Altered Beast. I played that some. It's it's a decent game, but you know the next game game I got for it, it's also one of my favorites, The Revenge of Shinobi. Uh, also got Fantasy Star 2 later on down the road, and that's my favorite game for the system. I'm not really big into RPGs, but there was something about the Fantasy Star series that I was attracted to. I don't know if it was the sci-fi element or or what, but so I already had my Sega Genesis, and I had gotten a gift of the, uh, the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System with the one that came with the Power Pad, and it came with Mario, uh, Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Me. And, you know, after having the Genesis, and I still played it all the time, I wasn't really <clears throat> into playing an 8-bit system once I went to a 16-bit system. I did buy Super CD for it and played that for a while. Thought it was pretty fun. But yeah, I just, I know the NES is a good system. I just wasn't, it was hard for me to go back to the 8 bit graphics when I was playing the 16 bit system at the time. So the Sega CD had came out and I really wanted one, but I couldn't afford it because they were pretty expensive at the time. And just following it in magazines and everything, I, the games. You know, they didn't really look a whole lot different, but there were no full motion video games for cartridge-based systems at the time, and that kind of stuff was appealing to me at the time, so I waited for some a few price drops on it, and I finally got a Model 2 Sega CD, and uh, some of the games that I really liked on it were Dragon's Lair, I had uh, Final Fight, uh, Sewer Shark came with it, it, it was okay, uh, I enjoyed it. It was a little difficult sometimes to see some of the things that were going on because the, the full motion video quality wasn't all that great. And another game that I really liked was a uh, shoot 'em up called Silphy. It, it was pretty cool. They used uh, polygons in that game, kind of like Star Fox. So around that same time, the PC became a really popular platform to play video games on. And saved up some money, got a uh, an old PC. It was Packard Bell, I think. Uh, got some some games on it you know that they really didn't run all that well on it so I basically sold that computer saved up a little more money and got a 486 which was like the top of the line at the, at the time played some really awesome games on that like uh, some of my favorite games of all time like a uh, Wing Commander 2 and 3 uh, the Star Wars uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter series played a uh, some of the King's Quest games, like King's Quest V, just really enjoyed the PC around that time. A lot of great games on the on the PC back then. So you know, I, I was like really big into PC gaming then. And then I see uh, commercials and stuff for the PlayStation, and Sony was coming out with a new system, and you know, it just it looked really awesome compared to what I was playing at the time. So you know, I thought. Just got. I, I just have to have a PlayStation. So I said, you know, once again, saved up my money for that. Got got the PlayStation when it first came out. Uh, played a lot of great games on that. Uh, played Tomb Raider. You know, Ridge Racer came with mine. Uh, Gran Turismo. Probably spent more time playing Gran Turismo than any other game on the PlayStation. And towards the end of the PlayStation's life cycle. I picked up Final Fantasy VII. I, I probably played through a good portion of it, but for some reason I never finished it, but I thought it was a pretty good game. So pretty much towards the end of the PlayStation era, uh, I got back into PC gaming, so I got another PC. Started playing some, some really great games like Far Cry, Half-Life 2, and Doom 3. Played some other games on it, but those were three really standout games for the PC at the time. And then I pretty much did just bypassed getting a PlayStation 2 and a Dreamcast. Uh, I don't know why, but I 
I saw the commercial for the GameCube and how they were coming out with the new uh, Rogue Squadron game. So that's really what made me want to get a GameCube. So I picked up a GameCube that came with uh, Mario Sunshine. Uh, Eternal Darkness, I picked that up. It was a great game. My wife and I played Animal Crossing quite a bit. <laughs> I can't really tell you why. It's it's pretty addictive once you start playing it because you want to you want to do pretty much everything in the game. It, you know, it follows the seasons and the holidays and stuff. But I got the Wind Waker and played that. Really loved that game. One of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Metroid Prime and of course, you know, the Star Wars Rogue Leader, which was also one of my favorite games. Um, I got a PS2 per, a little after, uh, maybe a couple years after the GameCube when the when the Slimline model came out. I picked up a few games for it. For some reason, I really didn't get into it. I guess I didn't have any great games for it. I get, I guess you could say. So I ended up selling that. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a Game Boy Advance. I didn't really play it. It was the model that didn't have a backlight lit screen or anything, or any lit screen. It was the original Game Boy Advance model. Uh, I did play Golden Sun on it, which is pretty good, but for some reason I got stuck on one part. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, I, I stopped playing that. I wish I, I wish I would have uh, kept that game so I could have finished it. Uh, bought a DS Lite. Um, I had to sell that due to financial reasons, but I played the uh, new Super Mario Brothers for it. It was pretty good. And then I bought a Wii. Have really enjoyed it. Still have my Wii. Uh, and then an X Xbox 360. I really like it a lot too. Um, one of the main reasons for me wanting to get the 360 was to get the orange box so I could play games like Portal and Half-Life 2 on my Xbox. Uh, that leads me up into some of the systems I picked up while I've been collecting. Uh, I picked up the Super Nintendo, the uh, the Mini model, uh, Sega Dreamcast. I just picked that up recently. i uh, got a, an original Xbox. Uh, enjoy some of the games for that, like all the Star Wars games and stuff. And I've also reacquired another PlayStation 2 and really enjoying that. It's one of my favorite systems to collect for now. Haven't picked up a whole lot of games for it, but you know, the, the games aren't too expensive for it. You can find really good deals and you can find PS2 games anywhere. So that's why it's one of my favorite systems to collect for. But that's pretty much my gaming history. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's probably boring, but <laughs> I hope some of you enjoyed it. So uh, this has been Gary with GameStorm. Thanks for watching.